Right, so it's time for our Great British debate this hour. I'm asking, should defendants be named before conviction? The Supreme Court has ruled that naming suspects before they are charged with an offence would be a breach of their privacy. But lawyers for media organisations have warned that this will effectively end their ability to report on police investigations. But I want to take this discussion further and ask whether we should be naming defendants at all before they're convicted. It's because publishing details of proceedings could ruin their reputation and only for them to be eventually found innocent. So what do you think? Should defendants be named before conviction? I'm joined now by Chris Dorr QC. He's a barrister and the author of Justice on Trial. Chris, uh, talk to me about this, because the argument here is that when a person is just a sus suspect, that they're not being formally prosecuted for anything. So why should their name be put into the public domain when they've done nothing wrong? Well, um, they may or may not have done something wrong in any individual case, but the point of this case is that it's wrong uh, in law to name them before they are charged with a crime. So this follows on from many high-profile cases, including in particular Cliff Richard, who was very famously named by the BBC, who had to pay him millions of pounds in costs uh, and, and damages. Uh, and, and this case arises from a very similar action, where a very wealthy businessman took action against uh, Bloomberg, the uh, news television network, uh, who named him as being under investigation for fraud um, before he was charged. And in the end, in fact, he was never charged. Um, so he took Bloomberg to court, and this has made its way all the way through the various levels of the court system, right up to the UK Supreme Court, who have said very clearly that everybody has the right to privacy before they are charged. Now, what you're doing, and I understand it, is moving the debate on to the issue of whether they should be named before they're found guilty. Because, of course, at the moment, once someone is charged by the police, that information goes into the public domain and the whole of the case can be played out in the media. Everything that happens in the trial, the names and details, even of witnesses, unless um, it's a sexual allegation, in which case witnesses have anonymity. Um, but the whole thing is played out in public. So I understand completely there's a discussion to be had around that. But at the moment, the law is clear. Before charge, there's a right to privacy. It has to be said that can only really be enforced by the wealthy. There's no coincidence that the only people involved in these privacy claims are people who are celebrities or wealthy, uh, wealthy people. Because most people who are charged crime, if they're named by the media, they don't have the money to pay a lawyer to sue for the breach of their rights. So they just have to take it on the chin. So this is a law that at the moment is working very much in favour of those who can afford lawyers and against those who can't. Um, but there is certainly a, an argument to be had uh, about whether or not anyone should be identified before they're convicted. Um, my view is a clear one. Uh, we have an open justice system, and I think the public are entitled to know what goes on in their courts. Uh, if you or I want to go and watch a criminal trial, uh, we're allowed to go and sit in the public gallery. We can watch everything that happens. We'll know who's involved. Um, but why shouldn't people who are watching on television have the same access as those who are watching in court? For me, I think it's really important that we see what's going on in our justice system. And my view is that absolutely it would be wrong to have a blanket ban on identifying any Anyone before the end of the trial, because that would mean that nobody would really know what was ever going on in trials. Okay, so, uh, okay, so Chris, let me just throw it back to you. Okay, so what if, right, and obviously you're a QC, so, you know, what if somebody, if somebody tried to make a, an accusation against you and then that was put out there in the public, because as you said, it should be nice and open, everybody should see exactly what's going on, but then it turns out that you're completely innocent. Isn't that going to cost you your job? How would that be fair? Well, it, it wouldn't cost me my job in the long run if I were found not guilty at the end of the trial. Um, and, and barristers have gone on trial. Some have been found guilty and some have been found not guilty. So it wouldn't cost me my job in the long run. It may cause me significant professional and reputational problems, as it does for anyone yeah, it would do. who's accused of a crime uh, which they didn't commit and, and the whole thing is played out in public. Uh, but I think it's very difficult to, to, to make an argument based on your own personal kind of position because that because we all would, would, would look to protect ourselves naturally i just think that we have in our country a, a long history of open public justice and i think anything that infringes that without a really good reason is potentially dangerous so I mean, what you're is, saying is, is, so what you're saying is if it were you you wouldn't actually want that but because we have an open system that 
it should be that way. I mean, I, I'm just I, I'm just thinking if it, you know, I think we do have to put it to ourselves as to whether this is fair. Because what if it does cost you that? And thankfully, there have been some celebrities who have been accused who have enough money to actually come back at those allegations and, and prove that, that those allegations are unfair and unproven and that it shouldn't have been out there in the public domain. Won't that also affect um, outcomes of trials as well if people's information is put out there at the beginning? Well, it can do, and there are, but there are strict contempt of court laws. Um, after someone's been arrested or an investigation has reached certain milestones, then publicity which might prejudice future criminal proceedings is prohibited. And indeed, it's a criminal offence um, to publicise information which might prejudice uh, criminal proceedings after someone's been arrested. So there are already existing laws that restrict what can be said about a case and limit it to a very significant extent. And whilst a case is going on and before the verdict, there are very significant reporting restrictions on what can be reported, mostly limited to what happens in court. So that the only reporting is the same information that's in front of the jury, which is very different Chris, to the American system. In American we're going to have system, to wrap it up there, Chris, because we, we have a news headlines coming up. But thank you so much for that. Sure. That's Chris Dawes. You're welcome. Have a good debate. Uh,